Welcome back to The Dish. It's time to dish. Some big races this weekend. Fountain Youth is going to headline it. Ahmed DeRosa joined by David Levitch. He is up in Oldham County, soon to be Henry County. Before we get to the races this weekend, David, I did want to ask you, how is handicapping horse races similar to scouting the competition? Um. Well, you can do it days in advance, obviously. I would guess that would be one comparison. Um, there's a lot of data on things, especially now. There's so much technology and ways to break down clips of teams and all that stuff. So I would say there's a lot of data. You can do it in advance. Um, I would say those are the two best similarities. Replay work? Yeah. Replay work? Yeah, you got plenty of replay work. All kinds of data. All kinds of data now, even in high school. From the hardwood to the dirt track, uh, it's Fountain Youth Weekend, three other derby preps coast to coast as well. We are going to focus on the one at Gulfstream Park where the Paddock Prince will have full card selections for the 14 race extravaganza down there. Led by the Fountain of Youth, 50 points to the winner. His derby top 10 uh, slightly amended after the Rebel Stakes with confidence game sneaking in there and Forte your champion Breeders' Cup winner, the only one of the Fountain of Youth entrants on his top 10. I happen to agree uh, that Forte is absolutely the best of this group, the one to beat. But, David, maybe uh, some pace issues for the champ. Yeah, the, the Fountain of Youth did come up an interesting race from a pace dynamic. You got the seven-horse mage, um, two-horse legacy. I could add some pace. I don't love the horses out of the Holy Bull. I guess Rocky can ran okay. He was super wide in that race and ended up winning. But I think they're just slower horses for the most part. Forte's coming off a layoff from the Breeders' Cup along with his prize main rival, Blazing Sevens. But if you remember last year, I know they're different horses, but Zandon ran in the um, Risen Star and then ran a huge race in the Bluegrass. So I don't know if Chad Brown's trying to do the same thing here, giving him a race and then going to shoot for the Bluegrass or the Wood Memorial or another prep. So I think um, while Forte is coming off a layoff, his works do look good in the morning, working with some solid horses and just absolutely blowing them away. So we'll see how he shows up. But, I mean, it's Putcher off a layoff. He obviously is good off these kind of um, day, um, layoffs. Yeah, I, I mean, in my mind, uh, Breeders' Cup champion uh, beat Cave Rock, who at the time certainly had the look of, uh, especially going to mile in the 16th, the best two-year-old, beat him on the square, Brisnet uh, speed ratings stack up. I'm sure the buyers do as well. It would surprise me if not. But Mount is 16th at Gulfstream, a little tricky. Uh, Mage does have the look, second lifetime start. There really is only one way to go for him, and that's on the front end. And that could be a big weapon against this group. Yeah, and I think it's a big sign of confidence that they're running this horse in a the fountain of youth off a of maiden when they could easily go allowance race and then maybe Florida Derby and see what they have, but they're going straight to the fountain of youth off a of maiden win. He did beat some good horses in that race. This is obviously a big jump up in class, but he does look like he is going to be the speed. We all know how Goldstrom can be on the main track a lot of times. And I think that would be Forte's only negative. I don't know how close will be to the pace in here. Um, some, you know, is a two year old. He kind of, as the race has got longer, he kind of, I mean, he was five links back early in the um, Breeders' Futurity, and then he was four to five links back in the Breeders' Cup. So he can make that one run for mid-pack, but at Gulfstream, it can be a little tricky trying to make that one run. So it'll be interesting to see if the horses, like the two-horse legacy odd goes with Mage, if, and if they do, then it'll really set up for four table. We'll see. I think uh, with Blazing Sevens, who I would e expect maybe, you know, if he steps forward as a three-year-old, which, you know, Sire was runner-up to justify in the Derby, uh, he's out of a Warriors reward mare, so maybe some questions about 10 furlongs. My issue with him, though, is given the running style and what we saw in the Breeders' Cup, which that race is a short stretch as well, mile on the 16th at Keeneland, uh, he wasn't getting to Forte. It's hard to see off the bench how he's made up that kind of ground against the champ. So from a win perspective, even though he won't be favored at 7-2, to two, uh, I'm definitely looking elsewhere, maybe even underneath, but he's one I'm eager to see how he runs, and then maybe you can kind of see what you want to do with him going forward. But I don't see Saturday being the day for him. Yeah, I agree with you. Even the Breeders' Cup, he was no, he was not close to Forte, and even in the um, hopeful, they ran against each other twice. He was no match for Forte, so they ran against each other two times. 
Forte obviously skipped to Champagne and went to the Breeders' Futurity, so they didn't run against each other in that race, but I agree with you. I think it's a wait and see with Blazing Sevens. I don't think this is the main goal. If you go through the whole card, Chad Brown is running a ton of horses off layoffs on this card. So most horses he ran by far this year at Gulfstream, so I think he's using a lot of these races um, on Saturday as maybe some stepping stones to bigger races, let's say Keeneland and other derby preps like that for all of his yep. horses. I will say there's one wild card in this race. It's Cyclone Mischief. His last race was really bad in the Holy Bowl, but his um, allowance win before that was really good. He beat Litigate by five and came back to win the Sam F. Davis. So it'll be interesting to see how he rebounds off that terrible effort in the Holy Bowl. That was uh, not good uh, for sure. Speaking of the Sam F. Davis, or at least where it is, Tampa Bay, I believe that is where Tappet Trice is going next. Uh, your yeah, number Tappet one. Trice is there. Yeah. Uh, could if Forte just blows the doors off this field, would you think about moving him up to one, or is that Tappet Trice's spot to lose until he loses? Um, I I think if Forte blew the doors off this field, he would probably be number one in the Derby top ten for most people. I want to see what Tappet Trice does next weekend, though. I think that horse. You know, everybody's saying Belmont horse already because that's what people love to do with horses by Tappet. Um, but I really think this horse, he showed real ability last time out in his allowance win. He got off the rail and showed more early speed, and he just looks like a – now he's not going to be facing a great – it doesn't look like the um, Tampa Bay Derby is turning out to be a great field, so I'll have to see the figure. But, you know, if Tappet Trice wins and Forte wins, I guess it would just be a preference at this point going into the final preps. It'll be interesting to see, though, how they split them up for the last leg if they both win because Forte's two for two at Keeneland. I'm guessing they'll go to the Bluegrass if he's two for two there and then tap a try, so will go to the Florida Derby, but I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the Wood, always an option for Pletcher-type horses. He, also, he, he has already said litigate uh, the aforementioned Sam F. Davis winner going to the Louisiana Derby, so shipping that and one. And Kings Barnes. Uh, to New Orleans. So, yeah, a lot of moving pieces for Pletcher, a lot of moving pieces for Baffert, who used to train your second-ranked horse, uh, Arabian Night, now with Tim Yakteen. They're saying just one more start for him. He's had the maiden win. Southwest was impressive. I'm not so sure I'm loving fourth career start in the Derby. I don't care what he does next out, uh, but certainly he's been impressive visually. No, I really agree with you. I, Arabian, he worked three furlongs a uh, week and a half ago. Now he's gonna, they're going to work again this weekend. But I'm, I think he's probably the most talented horse, raw talent in the field at the moment. But I agree with you. I don't. I, it's uh, Baffert horses don't usually. I mean, he's he even said after his last race, he the Southwest that this horse needs time between races. So he's going to have to run in the final prep, and then he's going to have to run in the Derby. So. It'll be interesting to see, I, I guess, if he wins his next race, he'll probably, if figure-wise, he could be the favorite if he runs a big race. But Yakteen has five horses this weekend in the San Felipe, which came up a fantastic race, by the way. It's by far the best derby prep to date. You think so, even with five from the same barn? Uh, You know, I mean, it's weird because Baffert has horses running on the card. Obviously, older horses, right. but then yeah, so he's going to be at the. I mean, he's just going to be watching his horses run. I Absolutely, just, I, yeah, it's uh, it's really stupid. He he did his time last year, and I think the point was made. I, I think this year it's kind of gotten a little long in the tooth, uh, because you know they're just playing games, uh, no different than Jeff Mullen's son training his horse, things like that, but. The horses are the same, so that's what we'll bet on at least. Now, you are having a sheet uh, for Gulfstream, 14 race card. Are you doing Santa Anita as well? I'm doing Gulfstream, Santa Anita, and Aqueduct. All these wow. tracks come out. Well, Aque Aqueduct doesn't come out early, but Gulfstream's right. been out since this past Saturday. Santa Anita came out yesterday. So these tracks are doing all these tip sheet people just great deeds by putting Dude. their um, cards out a week early. All right. Well, uh, three-headed monster on Saturday for the Paddock Prince. Get that at picks.horseracingnation.com. And uh, best of luck not only uh, at the windows, David, but uh, on the uh, on the court with your team. I appreciate it. Yeah, we got playoffs this week, winner go home, and then the derby looks like it's shaping up now. These big preps are starting to happen, so it's getting real That's interesting. It. It's all coming together. All right. He's the Paddock Prince. I'm Ed DeRosa down at HRN HQ. Appreciate you joining us. Good luck this week.